Well, joining me to talk about the extraordinary events at the Breivik trial in Oslo this week are Dr. David Holmes. He's a criminal psychologist and he's live with us from Manchester. Tyrrell is in Oslo. Her sister was shot by Breivik on the island of Utoya. And Nida Khan is a freelance journalist and a blogger who's live from New York. All three of you, you're very welcome. And of course, you're welcome to speak directly with each other. Tyrrell, let me begin with you. It must have been unimaginably hard watching this week. Tell us how you found it. Yeah, of course it's hard because uh, now this week he is explaining himself and uh, they are talking about what happened to everyone on Utea and uh, in Oslo. So I think it's hard uh, absolutely to listen to what he has to say and that is so... Um, empathetic and uh, all his opinions is now showing in uh, in the courtroom and of course it's been hard we would have expected that but now you've been through the first week do you wish it wasn't happening no I don't wish that uh, actually because uh, if he didn't have a trial uh, if he was shot on Utah uh, all the remaining relatives uh, from those who died and those who got shot wouldn't have uh, his opinion or see uh, what, how it's like now because uh, then there would just be his propaganda and his pictures that he obviously made himself and uh, just stories about how he would have been. So. Now we can see for ourselves how he is and how he behaves and uh, his reasons. Uh, so I'm really happy that we have a trial, but it's hard to listen to, of course. And I think, Tyrrell, it's fair to say a lot of our viewers around the world have been surprised and shocked by how many Norwegians share your opinion that it has been good to have him in court saying his piece. Dr. Holmes, what's your view of this? How have you reacted to the Norwegian insistence on him having his moment in court? I think I've um, kind of um, taken a slightly different angle. Um, I'm more worried sort of at the global picture. I think it's, it's wonderful to show the kind of Norwegian liber libertarian sort of uh, justice system. It's open, it's transparent, um, it enables the, the, the people within the country to see justice being done, in fact, throughout the world at the moment. However, you are giving a platform to someone who actually um, wants that platform, someone who would probably kill these people in order to get that platform, and you're doing the very thing that he would want. Um, it's, it's a case of everything he is saying is being transcribed and translated for the entire world via their press, and that it really does worry me because the parallel between this kind of propaganda and the kind of propaganda which you may have seen you know, emerging from the Depression in the 30s is very worrying. Tyrrell, are you not worried about the long-term consequences? I am kind of worried about the long-term consequences. I, I, and I was wondering, Sorry. Tyrrell, what about you? Are you worried about what this might be doing to the country in the long run? Well, I see it this way, that uh, the aftermath of the 22nd of July uh, was something so unexpected for Breivik. Uh, we showed, uh, showed each other love and uh, we met it with uh, more democracy and uh, it, all, it brought us all closer together and you can could get a hug from a stranger if you look sad after the 22nd of July and now, he, yes, he is spreading his propaganda uh, and to other people in the world but he has to defend, uh, I think, that uh, this uh, aftermath or the consequences of his action didn't get mm -hmm. the way that he wanted it to be. Nida in New York, let's bring you in. 
Yes, thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, my condolences to all of the family members. I can't even begin to imagine what it's like to sit in the courtroom and, and hear all of this vitriol and hatred coming from this man. And while I agree with Dr. Holmes that it is dangerous to give him this platform, especially for such a uh, long uh, amount of time that he's been given, uh, by the same token, I think it's good that we are focusing on it because the world needs to see what this man is thinking and the larger context of these right-wing conservative groups that are both in Europe and in the U.S. Uh, I believe the Hope Not Hate organization came out with a study this week about how there's at least 300 groups around the world that are anti-Islamic, um, anti-government, and that's a very, very disturbing and dangerous rise. And I think we in the media need to look at how we cover these stories as well. Uh, you know, why isn't Breivik termed a terrorist? Why is he portrayed as just a lone, disturbed man? Why isn't he depicted in the larger context of this troubling movement we see around the world? All three of you, let me read you this comment from Grant, who posts on Google+. Both Sky and BBC News channels have carried extensive coverage. I do not understand why it should take up so much of our news time. It's nothing to do with the UK, and we know that he is guilty. So why broadcast so much? Well, it's certainly true that not just the BBC, but all of the uh, major TV networks have carried a great deal of coverage of this first week of the Breivik trial.